So as you can see by clicking this little arrow on our drum rack channel, we can actually open up the channels for all of the samples that we've got sitting in there, as well as any return channels that we set up with the drum rack, which we'll see in a little while. And we'll just solo our two kicks at the moment. To be able to solo multiple channels, you need to go into Preferences, and we'll go into our record warp and launch settings. Normally you'd find the exclusive arm and exclusive solo buttons would be turned on. And just turn those off and that'll allow you to record arm on solo multiple channels at once, which is quite handy for doing things like this. So by playing that clip again, as you can see it's only the two kick drum samples that we can hear. So we'll just start with this first one needs to stand out a bit more, so we'll just go to our live devices, go into our audio effects, and we're going to start with putting an EQ on that channel, just to help tame it a little bit. The trick with putting effects on individual samples is to make sure that they go in between the simpler device and in between the end of the drum rack. If you put them on the other side of the end of the drum rack, you'll find that it's affecting the whole drum sound rather than just the individual sample that you're after. So we'll just bring out a bit of that bass. Bring out a bit of its attack. And we'll just take out some of that boxiness. And we'll also chuck a compressor on there. Again, making sure it's coming before the end of the drum rack. Bring our attack up a little bit, a bit more release. Go for the opto mode with this compressor, because it tends to keep more of the high end of the sound intact. We'll just bring our output down a little bit, because as you can see we were clipping the master channel. And on to our second kick drum. We'll just shape this one a little bit as well. So a bit of EQ on that one. EQ the bass slightly higher on this one, as well as the attack slightly higher. I'll just take out the middle a little bit. Also want to bring out the very high end with this one, just so that it's got a bit of air to it, a bit of space. So I'll just add a little bit of a high shelf there. Drag a compressor on after that one. And we'll use similar compression to what we used with the first kick. Again, just bringing down the output a tiny bit. And if we bring those two together, you see the first one's providing a lot of the solidity and thump, while the second one's just adding that bit of space and depth to the sound. To adjust both volumes as a whole, we can just use a shift button. You can click one channel, hold down shift, click the second channel, and then we can adjust those both as one, which is quite a handy feature. So we don't want those ones too loud to start off with, because we will be wanting to fit some other stuff in there. So we'll start with our first snare sample. We'll just EQ and compress that one as well, just to get it to stand out a bit more. Bring out the low end of the snare. A little bit of its attack. And we'll just take out a little bit of the boxiness of that one too. So we want everything fairly punchy. We might turn up the release time of this one just a little bit more. Just to keep some of that tail. Chuck an EQ on that one. Again, we're going to go slightly higher on this one than we did with the previous one to help spread everything out a little bit more. Bring those both together. I'm just using the individual volume controls to balance them against one another. 
And instead of compressing these two individually, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select the two snare channels, right click one of them, and go to group, which then, just rename this one to snare, as you can see, then puts our two snare samples inside a group, which allows us to chuck the compressor on the group channel, which will, means it will affect both snare samples at the same time. It's a good technique as it is quite handy to bind the two samples together and make them sound more like a single coherent sound. So we'll just play that one and apply the compression. And also allows us to use the one fader to adjust whatever samples are in the group as a whole. And then you can just click the little arrow button and hide those ones so that you can get a bit more room with the mix of you. <coughs> so if I unsolo those two channels, and then hear that with everything else in there. As you can see, kick and snare are now quite punchy. We're just going to add a little bit of the EQ to the hi-hat as well. First thing we're going to do is add a high-pass filter, take out any low end that might be in there, stop it clashing with the kick drum. And we're going to give it a slight boost up around 8 to 9k just to bring out some of the, the air of that sound. As you can hear, if we bypass the EQ, it sounds a lot more dull and lifeless. Fairly standard 4-4 rock beat. If we wanted something a bit more drum and bassy, or a bit more breakbeat-ish, we can quite easily just whip up a little bit of a breakbeat. like so. Or if you wanted something that's a bit more along the lines of dance, just put these kick drums back where they were to start off with. And it's a simple matter of removing some of the hats. So essentially we just want to be leaving the ones that are in between the kick and the snare and all of a sudden you'll get a rather interesting sound. So that's our little drum tutorial. Thank you for watching. I hope you've got something that you can take away and try out with your own copy of Ableton Live. And look forward to seeing you again on another Ben Ross's Conservatorium of Audio tutorial. Thanks for watching.